Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the setup screen. Basically, what are all the options in there and what should they be set to? All of this information is covered in the manual. And yes, I've read it personally. <laughs> I know it's not maybe the most entertaining reading that you've ever had in your life, uh, but it's there, has good information. If you're like me and prefer video tutorials, head to serato.com, click the word videos, click on Scratch Live, and you'll find a whole host of tutorial videos that will help you understand the program better. And inside of the software, there's also a very handy tool. If you go up here by the MIDI and setup, in between them, you'll see a question mark. When you click it, you get a list of all the keyboard shortcuts that you can use. Very handy. Increase your workflow. Uh, but as I move the mouse around, it tells me what things do. Internal mode, how to switch to it, keyboard shortcuts, and how to control it. Relative mode, okay. Left, you see F2 switches to it. Right, F7 switches to it. Handy to have in a pinch. But you go over any object and it's going to show you the keyboard shortcut and kind of what it does. Lock loop. Locks a current loop to prevent accidental changes or deletion. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. So the question mark can definitely be your friend. Right now, obviously I don't see it, but my mouse is over it. I'm going to click it again. Unhighlighted. Okay, so on the fly, at the gig, hit the question mark. Hopefully that's going to give you the answer. But let's go into the setup screen and take a look there. The first tab you see in the setup screen is going to be the hardware tab, and this will vary depending upon which hardware you're using. As you see right now, I have the TTM57SL connected. One thing that is universal with all of the Scratch Live hardware, you're going to see a USB buffer size in here. And latency, that's what it controls. Latency is the amount of time it takes for the waveform re to react to the motion of your hand on the control vinyl. And by default, it's set to 10. That's going to work on the majority of people's computers and have a very low latency. Uh, some of the top professional scratch DJs, they like to run it down around 5. Uh, I can't really scratch my way out of a wet paper bag, but I try and I have fun. Uh, I personally don't notice a difference in the feel between 5 or 10. So 10 is the default. That's going to work on the majority of people's computers. I would leave it there. If you have a weaker computer, lower on specs, or you see USB dropouts, you might want to raise it up, you know, over 10 towards 20. And when you do, make sure that you hit apply. Now we could cover USB dropouts and all that other stuff at another time. Today is about the setup screen. So let's go into the playback tab. And again, you hit the question mark, you put your mouse over this, it's going to tell you exactly what it does. But let me cover it for you anyways. I kind of like my voice. These are the things that I personally have checked. Track and warning, okay? That's going to let you know the virtual deck will start flashing with about 20 or 30 seconds left. Hey, it's your visual cue. You better hurry up and load another song, otherwise you're going to be playing silence. Nobody likes that. Playback keys use shift. I personally have it unchecked. When I want to hit a keyboard shortcut, like a cue point, 1 through 5 for the left deck, I want to simply be able to press the number. If I had the option checked, I would have to hold shift and press my keyboard shortcut. Handy for people with big fingers. Now, lock playing deck, something I always have checked. That prevents you from loading a song to the side that's already playing. If you've ever done that in a crowd, you'll probably have this option checked. It can be handy for quick mixing, keeping it unchecked, though. So, depending upon your style and attention level, you might want to have this checked or unchecked. Sort cues chronologically. Okay, when I make a cue point, I want the first cue point that I see in the song to actually be triggered by the first cue point shortcut. Sort cues chronologically. It appears in order on the song, how it relates to the keys on the keyboard. Good option. I keep it checked. Enable hot cues, that is when there is no cue point. Say it's coming up to the break of a song, you wish you had a cue point. If there was a cue point, typically you would hit, you know, number one for the first cue point on the left deck and it would take you there. In the absence of a cue point, 
with enable hotkeys checked, if I got to the place where I want that cue point to be and I hit number one, it's going to drop a cue point for me. Pretty handy for tagging stuff on the fly. So I like to use that feature. Below that is auto gain. Uh, auto gain should match the decibel level of all of your songs to a similar level. 93 dB is what's selected here. Commonly, I would say go between 92 and 94 dB. Anything higher, you're going to start causing damage to people's ears and fatigue them. You don't want that. You don't want them leaving the club early. So auto gain, I personally don't use because I have uh, files of different quality. I have some Wave. I have some 320. A perfect example is if you had a 192 MP3 and a 320 MP3, auto gain will match the decibel levels, but the 320 will always sound louder, thicker, warmer, fuller, crisper because it's a better audio file. So it's kind of a catch-22 unless you have all of the same quality of files and it works like a champ. So that's your choice, use it or not. Uh, below that, Hi-Fi Resampler, like I said, can't scratch away out of a wet paper bag. Hi-Fi Resampler is handy for top-notch scratch DJs who do a lot of low-speed scratching. Kind of scratching where the motor's off on the turntable and you're just slowly bringing it back and forth. Having Hi-Fi Resampler checked makes it sound less digitized, so it's handy to have. Over on the song load section, we have play from start checked. Hey, I want to load my song and have it start from the beginning. Go figure. Instant doubles. I have that checked as an emergency precaution. A very handy feature if you're playing and one deck goes down. You never know what can happen in a club. So I have that checked and ready when I need it. If you have more questions on instant doubles, let me know. We can cover that in another video. Uh, the other option there is play from first cue point. Some people who have uh, cue points in their songs, they don't want the intro. They just want to get straight to the meat of the track. They might want it to play from the first cue point. That's your option. Over here, breaking internal mode, a uh, little dial. Basically, when it's all the way left like this, you hit stop, boom, it stops. But the more you raise this, the slower it will stop. Think of a turntable. When you turn the power off, it slowly winds down. That's braking. And this is how to adjust the braking for internal mode. Your audio output is pretty much always going to want to be stereo. I've never changed it myself. Stereo is the way to go. And away we go to the vinyl control tab. Not a whole lot happening in here. Um, vinyl control... Personally, I, I don't have any of these checked. Adjust loops with vinyl. Next song on flip. What does that mean, you ask? Let's check the question mark. So, adjust loops with vinyl. This is me being quiet, thinking you're reading the box. But you're watching a video you don't want to read. Okay, so I'll turn that off, and you can come back to it if you like. Um, again, personally, I don't use these. Um, the one thing that I do have checked in here is needle dropping relative mode. I like using REL for playback with my control vinyl. It allows me to use the cues and the loops. And typically what I have checked is drop to absolute position. So if I'm playing in the middle of the song and I lift the needle back up, put it to the beginning of the record, it's going to follow and go back to the beginning of the song. Typically, relative mode would not do that, but enabling the needle dropping, drop to absolute position, will allow you to use it like regular vinyl. So I usually leave that option checked. This has been part one of the setup screen. Make sure to check out part two for more info.